try to rock the stage for the last couple of minutes left uh, for NOAA conference today. So um, as said, I'm Josefina Nung, as a director for Trend Innovation Scouting with Germany Trade and Invest. We're 100% daughter of the Ministry of Economy. Um, and next to me is Steven Nandi from Leicester. Um, is here as CTO, but also as the member of the advisory board for the Digital Hub Initiative. So the Digital Hub Initiative, and you will see just at the launchpad stage, uh, at 5.11, um, eight of our startups pitching. So what's the Digital Hub Initiative about? But before starting that, I would actually like to know, what is your role with Lakestar? Well, so, so Lakestar is a European VC. I think um, here in Berlin, it, it's, probably, it's probably fairly well known. We've got offices in Zurich and in London as well. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm CTO and I'm one of the partners there. I joined around about a year ago. My background is I spent 20 years as an engineer at Goldman Sachs running. Initially, I was a, a developer back in the day, um, but then spent five years in Tokyo running teams out there and building teams, and then back in London running uh, large organizations uh, across the bank. And also, I ran change management for the firm globally as well. So I had a, a bit of an eclectic career at Goldman before I, I joined Lakestar. And here at Lakestar, um, as CTO, I spend my time doing the diligence on all the investments that we make um, and also you know, helping our portfolio companies hopefully be the best that they can be, bring some of my experience from, from running large tech organizations um, at a corporate such as Goldman. I mean, the good thing for me is that you're based in London, but at the same time, as you just said, you have uh, Europe-wide offices. So I'm here to promote Germany, basically, as you know. Um, so what do you see, like, what are the advantages? I mean, you from Lakestar perspective, um, for a startup to be based in Berlin, or what do you see as an investor, why you should uh, choose a German startup to invest in? Um, I think, you know, from my, my personal perspective, obviously, I, I spend a lot of time in London, but I probably spend half my time when I'm traveling around, either here or in Zurich or in, or in the US. Um, from a, from a you know, diversity perspective, you know, there's great companies all over the world. You know, as a VC, we're obviously looking to promote European um, entrepreneurs and European startups. And so you know, we want to have presences in all the major hubs, all the major countries, where we're seeing you know, the innovation accelerating. Um, so here in Germany, I think Germany is a, uh, as, as has been discussed many times, you know, a very special place. But in terms of Berlin being very culturally diverse and the history of Berlin, I think it's attracted, you know, some very bright um, entrepreneurs and people who are not afraid to take risk, people who are very dedicated to the to their businesses that they're trying to launch. And you know, as a venture firm, you know, we look very much at the founders and the characteristics of the founders as being one of the key tenants mm -hmm. for success. And so, you know, we have to go uh, looking for those folks in, in the areas and in the cities that they want to live and they want to, they want to grow their businesses. So, so that is, is obvious that we need to spend time in Germany. And of course, we're, we're headquartered um, out of here in Berlin. Um, but we do spend time in Munich, in Cologne, in Hamburg as well, and, and other hubs around, around uh, Germany. I mean, do you see, due to Brexit, that there will be a stronger push uh, for Londoners or for startups based in London to move to Germany or other places? Or do you see there is no correlation between Brexit and British startups leaving? It's, it's, it's an interesting point. Um, if you sit in London right now and you talk about Brexit, then of course it's convenient to say that London is losing business and commerce because of Brexit. You know, the, from where we sit, um, we aren't seeing a, an impact uh, from Brexit um, at all. And we think that there's, there's clearly a reduction in the number of potential money hitting London. But that's not because London, I think, is a, a less attractive place because of Brexit mm -hmm. from a startup and from an investment perspective. I think it's more representative of just the globalization of technology, right? I think if you look at you know, how things have changed over the years, I think with or without Brexit, you would have seen the, the rise of hubs in Scandinavia, you know, across Germany, in France, now in Spain, Eastern Europe. You're seeing the same thing in the US. You're seeing Austin, you're seeing Colorado, you're seeing other cities outside of just the Bay Area mm -hmm. and LA and the East Coast also becoming technology hubs. So I think, it's, I think it's very convenient for politicians to point at Brexit as a reason for the rise of other hubs, but I think it's just a generational aspect where people want to be able to live and work um, and be successful where they choose. They don't want to have to migrate to these, these, these super hubs, as people sometimes call them. I mean, Klaus, uh, Klaus Hommels from Lakester, he decided to be member on the advisory board, or Lakester decided. I mean, the Ministry of Economy thought, okay, we need a digital hub initiative, and it was backed up by Klaus Hommels. 
Um, so did he tell you some more reasons why he thought it makes sense? I mean, a politi political initiative um, needs the backup of the business. Yeah. At least that's how we see it. And I think I used to work for Oracle, and I think it's so important that, you know, um, digital hubs made of startups, SMEs, um, corporates, um, and academia, you know, bundling the, the forces. Um, but at the same time, I mean, it's not only a political initiative. I mean, the Ministry of Economy, I think, decided well on that, but it's also backed by the business. And I think that was probably one of the reasons why Klaus said, okay, it makes sense to be part of it. Oh, no, uh, you know, absolutely. I, don't, I think if you look at any, any country in Europe, you know, not all the headquarters of all the big companies are in the capital city, mm -hmm. right? The, every business will, will grow and, and migrate to different cities around the country for various different reasons. And so if you think about startups, and as you say, it's that marriage of entrepreneurial spirit with um, perhaps support infrastructurally or otherwise by either accelerators or by local government, and then the, the council, the, the advisory, the mentorship by big businesses where people have already been there and done it, um, then of course you need to have these kind of scattered around the country. And you're gonna find that some cities are going to have a bias towards one type of industry versus another. You know, we, you'll see that here in Germany. We certainly see that in the UK, and, and you know, we see that in the US as well. So, from from our perspective as Lakestar, and you know, when I've spoken to Klaus about this, it's it, it's it's clear that we also, as a venture capital firm, we need to support the 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 growth of these hubs. Um, we have obviously friends and and acquaintances who are in some of these large corporates in some of these other cities outside of Berlin, you know, and they are calling us up and saying, hey, you know, there's, we've seen X or Y, you should come down and see them. Um, and so, you know, we get a good network effect as well. So we have to travel and listening to the panel before, it's about the challenges of being, of being a, an investor, you know, travel is a big part of that. And if we just sit here in Berlin or we just sit in London, we're not gonna see what's really going on because right. frankly speaking in this environment, people aren't gonna come and stand outside our office in a line knocking on the door asking for investment. We have to go looking for the best deals. And you told me as a CTO, of course, you see a lot of technological trends. Um, I mean, could you just name some of them? Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, been, it's been very interesting coming from a large corporate where I was running teams of hundreds of engineers to then seeing how, how startups are thinking about their technology stack and how they, are, how they are investing and growing themselves. In terms of, you know, let, let's break that into two halves. In terms of trends that I'm seeing that I get excited about as an investor and as a CTO, Certainly, the, the, the data sharing economy, I think, is, is going to become massive. There's been a, a wave of technologies around data warehousing, data provisioning. Um, the big cloud providers have been out there you know, selling high-performance databases. There's now been a rise of platforms to help you build your AI models mm -hmm. and deploy those AI models, and there's, there's a number of those out there now. But one of the things that hasn't been sold for, in, in my view, is, is data sharing, where you've got Company A has data, company B has data. They kind of want to share it with each other, but there's no safe way of doing that without you know, losing sight or losing control of that data. So I still, I'm looking at a number of businesses or looking at a number of areas where people are trying to solve that. I think the other area which kind of leads into that is, is um, encryption of data. We kind of think encryption is solved, um, but again, with Germany is a great example where there's a there's huge amount of legislation around privacy of data. With GDPR, we've got the same, th same issue. And so as we look to send data up into the cloud and use company A or company B to process data to give us value back, there's an inherent risk that you know, the data, whilst we may, um, we may encrypt it as it's transferring from company A to company B, once it's at company B, we have to unencrypt it, do some processing on it, re-encrypt it, and send it back. And so there's some technology called homomorphic encryption, which is now emerging as a, as a real enabler where you can actually do p uh, functions and, and uh, calculations on data that still remains encrypted. So I think there's an interesting wave of data sharing, um, data encryption that, that's coming up. So I, I, get, I get relatively excited about that. In terms of what I see in some of the portfolio companies that I look at um, as, as trends, and I think one of the trends um, is where uh, some of our startups that we've seen um, perhaps don't invest early enough in, in creating a product that they can then go to market or iterate around quickly. And I've seen a lot of startups now who've perhaps underinvested in tech at the start, have invested heavily in the go-to-market strategy, perhaps customer acquisition, um, perhaps in terms of you know, scaling out sales and, and operations, 
But when it then comes to trying to iterate that product quickly and get it out, they've realized they've underinvested and been too lean in their tech stack and are now having to slow things down as the tech stack catches up with the opportunity that they get. So you know, certainly I spend uh, time with, with VPs of engineering and CTOs and CEOs just trying to help them understand that you know, whilst you don't want to burn too much cash up front mm -hmm. on the technology until you've proven product market fit, you also want to be careful that you aren't setting yourself up for failure down the road by being too lean. Mm -hmm. Of course, I need to make a little bit more promotion for Germany. Of course. <laughs> of course. Um, as mentioned, we have 12 digital hubs. I mean, in Leipzig for smart infrastructure, in Hamburg, oh my God, this mic, uh, for logistics as well, Dortmund um, for logistics, Munich for mobility. Um, so tonight we also have a VC uh, reception here at Bloomberg office, and, and we really want to push our digital hub representatives. Uh, one of them is just uh, sitting over there, Falke Schütt for IoT Hub uh, Berlin. Um, we want to really... Um, support them, but as said, I would really like to, to know from your perspective why Germany makes so much sense to you. Why it makes sense more than any other, any other yes. country in, in, <laughs> in Europe. Well, obviously, second to England, um, I would say that Germany, um, you know, I, as I said, I, th I think the federated nature of Germany um, does bring different diversity and, and, and different challenges. You know, one of the things that you guys do that I applaud, and we're trying to do the same thing in, in other countries as well, is working closely with, with local government and with the legislation and with politicians. And I was listening earlier to um, uh, talking about scooters on the main stage and about you know, how you have to work with local city governments to make sure that you're, in, you know, you're, you're collaborating rather than going against. So I think the fact that you guys have hubs in different federated states, the fact that you then get to learn the local ecosystem, work with local government, understand those challenges um, is important, right? And that's not something that, you know, that, every, country, that every country does quite as well. And, and us as a, as a VC, we spend a lot of time um, with with politicians, with legislation, to really un to really help shape, you know, what we're seeing from the from the the venture side, from the, the startup side, get translated into well educated, well thought through policies for for the countries in general. And so I think here in Germany, you know, given the relationship that we have with with the ministers here, that you know, Klaus has has nurtured over many years, mm -hmm. you know, then obviously that gives us an advantage. Um, for any startups that are sitting here in Germany, we can add value back because of our, our connectivity to the regulators in Germany. Um, and so we can help those startups. And so we see it as a, as a good marriage where if you are a business here that, that needs the help of government, be that on the policy side or on the legal side, you know, we can help unblock some of that because we have that relationship to, to bring those conversations to the front. Mm -hmm. Just, I know it's, it's quite late, so we don't want to, you know, uh, take it too long. Um, as said, I'm just um, letting you know, Launchpad stage, our startups are already pitching. So afterwards, if you want, please check out um, Launchpad stage. Uh, but just a final question. So would you ever again, as Lakes, to be part of on the advisory board for the Digital Hub Initiative? I mean... Would we stay? Would we yes. go? Yes. Of course we'll stay. Of Thank course stay. It'd be, it'd be great to see what you guys have done here being replicated across more countries in Europe because you know, Europe needs to stand up for itself a lot more than right. it has done historically. And so I think you know, the work that you're doing, you should be helping the, the, the other countries, the other nations in, in Europe you know, replicate and the learn from you guys as well. Create a European vision, basically. Yeah, exactly. So we have to help ourselves. Stephen, thank you very much for your support and um, for the time uh, and the questions asked. So, thank thanks you for very being much. invited. <laughs> thank you.